Oh, some of you have done self-assessments using, and I have to say, <coughs> our new brand spanking new assertive humility diagnostic. Um, how many of you have done this? I think it's about 60. What I first of all want to say around the assessment is as I was working through designing this tool, I was getting really excited about it. I was thinking, wow, this is just coming together beautifully. And then as I read more and more research papers, uh, particularly one research paper, uh, it said you can't do a self-assessment on humility. <laughs> Go figure. Uh, Self-assessment is a little bit of a paradox, potentially. I am very humble. Just ask me. Uh, oh, I'm not humble at all. Hmm. Well, is that false humility? What is that? You tell me. So I guess what I would also challenge you to think about, because actually what did uh, the choices model say for me to do? Give up the assessment tool? No. Design a 360. That's the way to go. And so that is now open to you if you'd like to do that. Uh, please let us know if you'd like to go through the 360 view of that. Why? Because it will give you a much stronger view of where you're up to. I looked at um, a number of subscales here to sit underneath and it comes from the model that we've been working through. Uh, first subscale is that of self-worth. It's very difficult to have assertive humility unless you've got this one on board. You think about the ego trap so much of it is around this flagging level of self-worth. Self-worth doesn't come from others, it comes from within. And how do we strengthen this as a bedrock so we can have assertive humility? Not arrogance, confidence, equanimity, these sorts of things. Second subscale is the trust and compassion. Probably spent enough time on that, but to say uh, if we think about self-worth as the intra, this is the inter-personal, uh, um, how am I playing on that? Do I truly choose to care about others? No, no, no. Do we really, truly choose to care about others? Uh, number three is, uh, again, fundamental, particularly to the humility one. Am I others-focused or am I self-centered. Why is contempt the fastest growing emotion on this planet according to Paul Ekman? Potentially due to me, 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 me that goes from a lack of external centricity. Is that a double negative? I don't know, you work it out. Uh, the fourth subscale that I adopted was this, <coughs> that of perspective because a lot of our assertive humility is destroyed when we forget what this thing's all about. Has anybody worked out this whole thing as a bit of a ride through life and we have fun and, and we make a contribution? Or is it about, have I got this thing ready for tomorrow? Have I cleared my emails? And, and you know, it's not even brain surgery, but I'm not getting it very serious about it. And so this sense of perspective uh, has to be on there somewhere. And then the last one is how do I choose to resolve conflict? This is much more in the assertiveness scale. Do I do this aggressively? Do I do this passively and avoid? Or do I do this again with strength? There's an overlap here, a little, around the compassion piece. Um, who's keen to see some of the data? Does anybody like to see some of the data? Yes. And look, most of it says, you know, really, you guys are just sensational. <laughs> and if you take that on as an accolade, then we've got even bigger problems. You need to go read, read, read. make sure you do the 360. <laughs> Maybe that's the solution. Yes, please, jump in. If you do this in three months or six months, yes. we'll... we'll uh, okay, so how can I... Will there be a difference because of what you're going through life? Yeah. Or is that pretty constant in your yeah. core DNA? Yeah. So you're ask, ask, sort of asking the question, are these personality traits or are, they, are these choices and behaviours that we can adopt. And I think there's, the answer is both. It would be where the research sits, but the more recent research would say, with all of this stuff, there's a huge learnability to what we're talking about. And there's no doubt around the whole neuroplasticity piece, we are continually rewiring the brain. And I've got to say, the last 12 years in my life has been rewiring my brain much more in this direction. 
you can do it. And you know, I absolutely notice and others notice the difference around each one of these by the effort I've taken to do that. I'm not saying I'm there, but it's, it's doable. Uh, not easy, easier to do it at five uh, than at, I won't mention ages. Where is someone's natural emotional intelligence sitting? So, you know, how does that come from? Some people yeah. are obviously more aware, or yeah. is, it, is it easy for someone? Or? Um, I think, can I come back to this discussion here, which says that we look at the, the key enablers for assertive humility. Number one on there is self-awareness, both emotional, uh, cognitive and spiritual. And so I do truly make this point that this is a shift of consciousness. This concept is a shift of consciousness. All right, let's get into some of the, I know you've done a beautiful job of deferring me going through your results. I quite <laughs> like that. Don't think I didn't notice. You know, all these questions start to come forward. We've got to, you know, let's, uh, let's procrastinate. No, 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 we're going, we're going to get there. Uh, this is how you see yourself uh, on the front of compassion and conflict, conflict resolution. Uh, number one, my decisions are value-based and for the greater good. Uh, and five represents that almost always type dimension around this question. Uh, what does this say? It says, well, nice profile, really like that. And so this is very much that intention piece of, and some of you have already said this, this is how I interact with my world. I do it with good intention. Um, I happily have tough conversations when someone has behaved or, or performed poorly. Now this is a little bit more of a mixed bag, isn't it? And look how those two actually uh, ask a question, do they not? If I am operating well on the left hand answer, how is it that I lean out of the right hand answer? Because the extent to which I don't happily have those conversations suggests much more of a sympathy interaction. And so on the right hand side, I would argue we've got a behavioural a question on the left hand side, an intention question. How do those two come together? Please. I'm curious about the choice of the word happily. If you had said mm. willingly, I would okay. have had a quite Good. different answer. Good. But my pushback to you would be to say, in, assertive, in an assertive, humble way, uh, that when I am operating with compassion, I will happily do that because I know it's in their best interests and in the organisations. Yeah? And the, and the bottom line also relates to this same, same piece, does it not? You know, I can quickly overcome anger at work at home by having compassion for the other person. Good luck with this one. Isn't this one of life's challenges? Uh, who has children? Yeah, excellent. I imagine you do this. Your child is acting up. You feel this rage coming up through your body and you think, wow, what an opportunity I have in life to nurture this child through to adulthood. <laughs> I love them so dearly, love them so dearly, and I can only hope to uh, encourage them back into a state of happiness. Is anyone doing this? Challenging, challenging, yes. A lot of the time, not some of the time, none of the time. Well, it's a little bit, again, a little bit of a mixed challenge. But again, in busy days, as we all have, how do I do this more often? This is assertive humility. And let's pick some others. Ah, the obsessions. So let's come back down to the ego model again. Here are some of the obsessions. How did you travel on the obsessions? I believe that life should be fair and reasonable. There's that data I mentioned before. Here it is, you can't back off from it. You said it, not me. Um, and um, only one of you said actually it ain't and reality is it shouldn't and couldn't. And the more I think it should, the more I'm going to be a little bit upset with life. Uh, right hand side, uh, I can quickly make peace when adversity occurs and see the underlying opportunity. This is choices model. Um, again, good opportunity there. Um, I get concerned about my future finances, relationships, health happiness. Is that a reasonable result, do you think? I mean, that's a big number, isn't it? 34 of you spend uh, quite a lot of time on worrying about the future. Do you know, anyone want to say who they are? Who, who you are? You? Yeah, cool. And so this is the idea, or this is the challenge many of us face to say, how do I work through that in a resilient and a, assertively humble way to say, okay, what can I control? Uh, how do I get the information that I need and communicate with others and lead others? Uh, the extent to which I spend too much time here actually doesn't help anyway. It, isn't that right? We know this. Uh, point in time though, interesting to see that. 
Yeah. Um, I experience frustration when I fall short of personal expectations. Does anybody do this? We know some of you do. Uh, again, this is an obsession. Uh, what should I do instead? Learn to laugh at myself, go and play golf, I don't know. Uh, but the extent to which frustration is healthy, yes, there's a level of that, but to its extreme, debilitates performance and actually starts to, to beat yourself up. Uh, uh, again, ego piece. Uh, are the dependencies. Um, I can see, I feel welcome in this room uh, because some of you also grew up with this overcaring um, uh, position. Um, I, everyone like the double, triple negative of this question? Probably <laughs> needs a bit of work. I don't overcare about others' opinions of me. At the moment, there's not one person in this room um, who's in that space. Yeah. Would this, and we're, uh, we're all above 30, would this question at the scale be significantly different yeah. if it was a, a poll of 25-year-olds? Yeah. So I reckon this is the exciting piece around this tool, I think, is over time to start collecting that sort of data. Uh, seniority, age, gender, any other dimensions we can go with? Probably you know, all the standard stuff. Uh, we, we can uh, culture for sure uh, to see what are the impacts. Here. What, what you, what's your hypothesis? I think under 30 would care a lot about others' opinions of themselves. Yeah, I mean, uh, should we look at this generationally as well? I, I, interestingly, we, we applied the, the gen piece as well. Um, in the teens, I think this would be through the roof as a drama. Um, back to the you know the, the younger care about what? Uh, yeah, interesting to have a look. Um, what else we got? Nice to see. Nice to see. Um, the person that did get a number one here, please do not show yourself. You might get <laughs> <laughs> it's, okay. it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. No judgment, no judgment. This is a centricity one, which I think is interesting. And I'll, I'll let, let you reflect on this one, but it, it talks about this idea of, um, the first one is a question of what's most important to me is it the external or the internal? And an interesting spread uh, that puts it across the, the board. Um, it's not to say that you are self-centred, it's to say that uh, there's an interesting spread. Um, good to see that there's a huge leaning towards the right-hand side. And perhaps that's uh, uh, endemic of this sort of group that would come together to this sort of event, that is about making a contribution. Um, the, the other piece, what do you make of that? What was this question trying to tackle? You definitely ego around entitlement. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, to what extent do I feel entitled to this thing? And the extent to which I hold on to entitlements holds me back from assertive humility. All right, let's, uh, here's the, the wrap up results. Um, you know, is this useful? <laughs> I'm not so sure it is at the moment. What have you got here? You've got a great result. What's going to be more useful as we start to see 360 data coming in against this and we start to see database uh, across bigger volumes of people and so on coming in against this. Uh, then we're going to get into some useful stuff. Uh, and we certainly intend to publish against this uh, in, uh, in, the, in the media and so on. Um, again, I'd say, uh, what is this one? What is the overall result useful uh, at the moment? It will become useful, again, with through those other pieces. Um, as an overall picture, you guys are doing pretty well according to where this tool sits.